The next cloud economics in the AI era demand ruthless architectural discipline, not just better discounting. And this kind of goes to things I've been screaming about for many years, that if we're going to build these very expensive systems and very process excessive systems, which is what AI is, and also data excessive systems, which is what AI is, then we're going to have to think about optimizing the architectures that we're using in the infrastructure uh, to build our cloud frameworks, our non-cloud frameworks around this, this technology. And so we're talking more about optimization of the architecture where that probably that was not, you know, a big item five years ago or even 10 years ago. They were just throwing cloud services at it, throwing money at it, and just in trying to keep it, keep the thing going. And it didn't really matter how they were consuming the resources. And that's why we're seeing repatriation these days. In many cases, people are spending, you know, as much as 10 times what they thought they were on the hyperscalers because of these inefficient architectures and these inefficient application deployments that sit in the cloud. So many of the lifting and shifting we did uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, ended up just being an un under-optimized bunch of applications that we have to fix. And so that's why we're seeing this today. And so now that the AI stuff is starting to emerge, hugely resource intensive, hugely infrastructure intensive, people are asking, I think rightfully so, the questions around how we're going to optimize those architectures. And that's primary, you know, primarily, you know, when I get questions from businesses out there, they want to know how that's done. And you do it via architecture, just like anything else. And you have to think through and do some planning in terms of how you're going to use resources and what resources you can bring to bear within your AI system. And that's going to take a lot of work.